Welcome to the University of Washington Health Sciences. Whether they stand alone or work together collaboratively, these six health sciences schools represent the most exciting and exhilarating research, teaching, and patient care in the country. I think the University of Washington is a, a great place to practice medicine. We have a very large school of medicine um, with some of the world's experts in their field, and it's a wonderful environment to work in. One day I might be seeing patients all day, and another day I might be working on research, and another day I'm committed to teaching residents, and uh, another day I might be here hopefully watching a soccer goal. <laughs> My research focuses on uh, emergency planning uh, at athletic events, specifically in preparation for uh, sudden cardiac arrest at the athletic event. Having the right preparations could be the difference between uh, survival and a bad outcome. Call for help now. What medical students do, are doing now is really amazing. Volunteering in the community, public outreach, working at uh, underserved clinics, helping individuals who may not have access to health care. And I'm just trying to feel for lifts or thrills. Could she have another condition yeah. right, that has nothing to do with her thyroid? Or, oh, yeah. There is a shortage of primary care doctors. I would define that as a family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine. Some would also include women's health, what's called obstetrics and gynecology. The University of Washington has been a great place to teach. They have a strong commitment to primary care training. Uh, they have uh, a good diversity amongst students and faculty. I'll let Dr. Maresca know that you're here. I chose to work in underserved communities for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which I think was just my own background as a Native American person. Family medicine is totally rewarding. We get to see women when they're pregnant and get to be there when their babies are born. I get to see elders. You can make a difference for that whole community. And I think we, as family physicians, have a responsibility to do that. The kind of technology that's developed from the human genome has allowed us to understand uh, aspects of the zebrafish genome, believe it or not, as well as vice versa. Why fish? Uh, they're pretty small. You can raise large numbers of them, uh, which means you can look at lots of animals and get an idea of variation, how things change. We can watch these cells as they initially form uh, because these embryos being so little, you can use microscopes to actually just look right inside them and see the cells right in front of your eyes, essentially. We're mainly interested in questions of how the body is put together and how does it recover from damage. Well, that's great. It's a really exciting time in biology. The new genetic tools from the Human Genome Project and others have really uh, opened up research in a way that's going to have tremendous impact on us as humans and us in the world over the next 50 years, for example, in heart disease, why heart cells are dying and perhaps uh, how heart cells could be repaired. So genetic counselors yeah. use several tools in genetic counseling. This is your mom and her family and your dad and his family. One of the main ones is a family history where we ask about usually three generations of a family and what kind of medical conditions are in the family. How old was your mother when she had breast cancer? And then we can trace those diseases to help inform the patient and the family about what tests would be available. Genetic tests are varied. Many of them are blood tests and they're looking at the DNA or at a biochemical marker. Genetic counseling is so exciting because it's still a relatively new field and I think almost anyone will need to see a genetic counselor during their life. ISIS is really unique because we can go from skills training, so how do you tie a knot, how do you do a procedure, to really simulating the entire operating room environment. It's heart rate's a little fast. So once you learn the basic skills, so camera navigation, instrument navigation, coordination, grasping, what we call the bile duct, here's the intestine. So I'm gonna take the gallbladder and I can actually move it around. So we can come here and we can train an emergency. We can simulate a gunshot wound. We can simulate a, a patient with a heart attack and really practice as a team managing those situations. Charging. That ability to use modern technology, laparoscopic surgery, to really help somebody, get them back on their feet, get them back to their family, it, there's nothing better. 
The University of Washington School of Medicine is the medical school for a five-state region, Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. Students train in rural community clinics in these five states, as well as at Harborview Medical Center and University of Washington Medical Center, two of the region's most comprehensive, state-of-the-art healthcare facilities. Chances are, if you fall climbing Mount Rainier or suffer severe burns or head trauma from a car accident, you would be transported to Harborview Medical Center and put back together. As the only level one pediatric and adult trauma center in a four-state region, Harborview serves the most severely injured and critically ill. Owned by King County and managed by UW Medicine, Harborview welcomes and treats a diverse population, including non-English speaking patients and the homeless. UW Medical Center is known for making history. It is the site of many firsts, including the world's first long-term kidney dialysis and the Northwest's first heart transplant and total knee replacement. UW Medical Center is internationally recognized for providing the highest medical standards in an environment of caregiving excellence. It is consistently ranked among the top 10 hospitals in the nation. The School of Public Health has a strong, vibrant community. By nature, they are collaborative. Public Health's mission is health promotion and disease prevention and creating technologies and interventions designed to improve and enhance quality of life. Public health is simply, to say the obvious, the health of the public. It is looking at the disease burden and the conditions uh, that influence people's uh, lives uh, in terms of their health. And that includes diseases, it includes uh, social services such as healthcare delivery, uh, it includes the studies of epidemics and populations, uh, it includes uh, even the mathematical and statistical ways of looking at very large data sets. My own research is in the area of cancer research. All the different disciplines really work towards understanding how you keep human populations healthy and prevent illness, measure illness when it's present, and help policymakers prioritize how they spend the public dollar to take care of their populations. I think it's going to be one of the very most important things to understand about how human beings are going to survive on this planet. And we've seen enormous advances in vaccines, um, especially if you look at something like meningitis, where we're moving into a vaccine that might be lifelong for that disease. Totally changes the nature of epidemic meningitis in West Africa. So there's lots of advances on all different fronts in technology that are really important to public health. We are involved all over the world, and I get a tremendous satisfaction out of watching where our students wind up and the things that they're able to contribute to. Really exciting thing about working at the UW is we have the premier department of global health in the country, and that means we've taken the step to create a strong academic program with complementary fieldwork experiences and a commitment to working interdisciplinarily. So I think it's a great time to be here in Seattle at the University of Washington. Our students are getting the opportunity to work with the most exciting group of faculty from all over the world, ones who are leading major projects on topics like HIV AIDS, maternal and child health, cancer. We have people working on vaccine development for TB and malaria and new drugs discoveries. So you can work from the bench to the field. I can't imagine a more rewarding future because it lends itself both to like my own sense of adventure but also my belief in social justice. Most recently, I spent six weeks in the northern city of Cap Haitian in Haiti. I worked for two weeks on trying to identify the strengths and weaknesses of their HIV care. And in that short time, I identified three things that immediately were um, changed or improved. And it's that kind of lasting systematic change that public health allows. It kind of opens up your eyes to the possibilities of the, even the little 
things that you can do to try to improve the lives and health of people thousands of miles from your home. Students come back from these experiences energized. I think they see that um, there are big problems out there that can't be solved in a six week uh, rotation, um, but maybe that makes them committed to making it their lifelong journey. The University of Washington School of Social Work is committed to helping the poor and oppressed and improving the quality of life for all. They strive to maximize human welfare through research of complex social problems, education of social work leaders, and engaged public service. People have the power to change, and that's one thing that social work um, really teaches us at the very early, um, early stages of our training. A lot of social workers do advocacy kind of work and outreach and education and a lot of that is to really um, help individuals and communities identify the, the strength, the resilience and the skills that they have. My area of research for the most part has been on domestic violence or family violence. A new project at UW might be for you. The Men's Domestic Abuse Checkup is for guys who have concerns about how they're acting in the relationship. The goal of the Men's Checkup is to motivate um, adult men perpetrators to self-refer into treatment. Currently engaged in a research project in, in Walla Walla um, to introduce telephone-based depression care. That you had some thoughts about wanting to hurt yourself. In a region where there's no psychiatrist and uh, real scarce availability of mental health services. My work is, is engaging. It's just wonderful. I'm working here and this is Casa Latina and it's a day worker program. So we're trying to help them do things like green cleaning and um, CPR trainings and things like that so that they can increase their skill level. Entonces, aquí va a estar su nombre en esta lista. I love directly working with people. I can see the change in people um, little by little, but you actually you witness that. Participar aquí como voluntaria aquí en el Language Bank. It was an, another natural fit for me to be working here at the Red Cross because we serve so many people that have a lot of barriers to services. Social work is a profession that really seeks to address um, disparities and injustice in society and bring about positive change. The University of Washington School of Nursing has repeatedly been ranked number one in the country. This is due to the exceptional faculty, highly sought after graduates, award-winning research, innovative and technologically sophisticated curriculum, and partnerships both locally and globally. There's always a need for nurses wherever you go in this country as well as this world. I think nursing is really an exciting profession and I think it's getting even more exciting with the different types of things that are opening up, especially um, with global health. People tend to think of it as just hospital based, but in fact it's much, much uh, broader than that. They could work in the community, they could work in clinic, they could work in schools, they could work in hospitals. Some of the work I've done in terms of domestic work here in the United States has been working with underserved populations. I've done some work in Caracas in the urban areas of um, Venezuela, working with the street children. But I really felt that nursing suited the kind of person that I was. I worked as an operating room nurse for a while. One thing that really interested me was doing research. And I used my nursing education, my nursing knowledge, and my nursing background to really inform the kind of research that I want to do, the kind of scientific questions that should be asked. Previous research uh, among immigrants shows that once immigrants move to the United States, their health declines over time. How often does your job require you to work very hard? And so the goal looks at ways to prevent disease, prevent injuries, before people even get to the point where they need to get hospitalized. And so that's where I think nursing makes a real big difference. There are still issues within um, the surgical arena and in the chronic wound care population that need answers. And we're testing different interventions to try to improve healing and reduce the risk of infection in high-risk patients. I think there's um, a lot of importance to the work that nursing brings to society. Very bright people want to come here and they want to change the world. 
The School of Pharmacy is a national and international leader. They strive for excellence in pharmacy education, research and service that partners with others to promote the discovery, development and appropriate use of medications for the health, welfare and safety of the public. Well, there's a big demand for pharmacists and there have been for probably at least 20 years now. A lot of that is because as our population is getting older, people are living longer and they're taking more medications and there are um, newer and more complicated medications being developed all the time. Uh, your blood sugar, I am going to have to do the big finger stick. And that's really kind of a hands-on classroom and a little bit of model pharmacy so we can help our students learn practical skills before they go out and do their experiential training in their final year. We do a lot of communication skill development with students. Squirt out a little bit. They learn to do uh, a skill called compounding, which is actually making of medications that may not be commercially available. We also have them fill prescriptions in this lab, just sort of um, placebo sorts of things. Some people don't quite understand why you would need at least six years of education to be a pharmacist, <laughs> but uh, we do so much more. You have to learn so much about disease states and health and the body and chemistry and how the medications work so that you can really help prescribers make those decisions and that you can help patients to determine what's going to be best for them and how they can best use products. So there's really a lot of knowledge involved and skill into being a pharmacist. What I like about pharmaceutics is that it is applied research so you can you have the hope of seeing what you're doing being used in the marketplace. I actually have two inventions. Um, one is a nasal spray device which delivers drug to the upper part of the nasal cavity and if you can deliver drug to that part of the nasal cavity you can actually get direct delivery to the brain. And the other part of the invention is a nanoparticle formulation which enhances absorption across the membranes in the nose. We entered the University Business Plan competition and won $30,000 to put towards starting a business to further develop this technology outside of the university. What we do is can be applied in the clinic at the bedside by the physician, by the pharmacist, by the nurses in terms of improving drug therapy of the patient and reducing perhaps the toxicity of the drug and improving the effectiveness of the drug. It's really fulfilling at the end of the day to say that yes, I've accomplished something that's very important in terms of a better use of a drug. As an international leader in education, research, and clinical services, University of Washington School of Dentistry educates a diverse student body and brings advances and excellence in oral health care science to the pressing oral health needs of our state, the nation, and the world. A dental degree is actually uh, quite uh, a wide spanning thing these days. You can be a general dentist um, and, and do the things that you would expect, get fillings, dentures, implants, crowns, things like that. Or you can decide to take one of the subspecialties of dentistry. If you like science, if you like uh, understanding how the body works, etc., but you also like doing something with your hands and have an artistic side, etc., then that's a really good field for you. The University of Washington is actually one of those schools that are big into community outreach, prevention, education, and then so that's what leads me to here. The dental students and dental faculty come over here at the clinic and um, we provide free dental care for um, you know, homeless teenagers around this area. Did you get a chip on your front tooth? I was part of a team that put together a new electric toothbrush. So it's called an Ultrio. It's a really neat toothbrush. And so the bristles vibrate sonically, make bubbles in the toothpaste and water, etc. And then the um, little paddle emits ultrasound and causes the bubbles to pulse. And the pulsing of the bubbles actually does cleaning of the teeth. So it actually cleans beyond the bristles, beyond the where the bristles can get to, so it can get in little crevices in the teeth. So the mouth guard project, first and foremost, our goal was to get mouth guards to all the University of Washington athletes. The mouth guards are a very easy and, and simple way to prevent traumatic injuries. It is simply fabricated by just taking an impression and then fabricating mouth guards. Concussions or trauma to the head can be um, either parlayed a little bit or completely averted having a mouth guard because the mouth guard is an extra thickness that absorbs some of the shock when somebody's teeth come together really high. Three out of 
10 athletes are going to suffer some kind of injury, which you know could be very mild to severe throughout their life. And that's not a very small number. So we try to prevent those injuries by just fabricating something simple like a mouth guard. People come in and they're in pain and, and you get them out of it. So that's something I like to do. It's very rewarding to see those patients after, you know, still saving their teeth and at the same time taking them out of pain. We've taken um, the step to, to create a strong academic program with, um, with complementary field ex work experiences and a commitment to working interdisciplinarily. So we're trying to help them do things like green cleaning and um, CPR trainings and things like that so that they can increase their skill level. It's a really exciting time in biology that the new genetic tools from the Human Genome Project and others have really uh, opened up research. I think it's going to be one of the very most important things to understand about how human beings are going to survive on this planet. It's about making a difference and being a difference in the community. Very bright people want to come here and I think not only are they bright and smart and intelligent, but they want to change the world. Thanks for visiting the UW Health Sciences Center. We hope it has opened your eyes to the excitement, challenges, and numerous career opportunities available to you at the University of Washington and in the fields of science and healthcare.